This is the city hall I built recently. And this is the digital version I made using Bricklink Studio. It's a program from LEGO that lets you build, well, whatever you want really. It has every piece you could need in any color you want, and you can even use it to make instructions for your builds. So today I'm designing some things for this town hall I made using Studio, and because a lot of you requested it, I'm taking you through everything you need to know to start building for yourself. I also added time codes to the entire video to make it easier for you to navigate through the different topics. So let's get started. First things first, we need to download Studio. To do that, just search for Bricklink Studio on Google, and it'll be the first link that pops up. Since I'm on a Mac, this will say download from Mac, but they also have a Windows version available. Just click download and after it finishes, go through the setup and wait for it to install. When you open Studio for the first time, you'll start on the home screen. You can turn this on and off in the bottom left corner, but I kind of like it. Your recent projects will show up here and you can browse through other people's creations over on the Studio Gallery tab. One tab lower, under My Studio, you can log into a Bricklink account and upload your own things for others to see. With that out of the way, let's create a new project and jump into Studio. This is what it looks like when you start an empty project. The first thing you'll notice is all the bricks are on the left. I'll get into it a bit more later on, but here you'll find pretty much any LEGO part that's ever been made. Above that is your toolbar, and on the right you can see your color palette and building steps. First, let's quickly look at the settings. In the general tab, you can pick a currency. Since Studio is directly linked to Bricklink, it'll update prices on specific parts based on the current price per part on Bricklink. This is super useful if you're planning to order everything you need to build a physical copy of your design. With that, you can also select if the parts you'd like to order need to be new or used. Other than that, I don't really mess around with the other options here. On appearance, you get to decide your background color, render quality while building, and a couple of other things. I have a pretty decent computer, so I'll just leave render quality on max, and I don't really change the background color. I do, however, sometimes check the outline edges when I'm building on a bigger skill. This makes it a bit easier to identify the different parts from each other. In the shortcuts tab, you can find, and if needed, change all of your keyboard shortcuts. It's useful to go through it, so you can familiarize yourself with them, but I rarely change anything here. If you're done with the settings, just click OK. Now you can use Studio with either a mouse or a trackpad. I personally prefer using a mouse, since I use that for pretty much anything else as well. I'll take a brick from the palette on the left to show you what you can do with the mouse. The left mouse button is what you'll be using most of the time. You can click once to select a single part, and you can click and hold to drag out a bigger selection. Pressing and holding the right mouse button will let you rotate around your build. The mouse wheel will let you zoom in and out, and clicking the wheel lets you move around the building area. If it doesn't have a clicky thing in it, you can also hold the space bar and use left click and hold to do the same thing. Now that you know how to navigate, we need to talk about the toolbar, because it's kind of an extension to your mouse. Up here you'll find the select button. If you click the arrow, you get a couple of very useful extra options. The first one being select by color. As the name suggests, this will select everything from one specific color. I have this little example with some 1x1s and 2x2s in both red and white. Let's say I want to select all the red parts. I can left click on any part that's red and it'll select both the 1x and 2x bricks of that color. The next option is select by type. If I switch to that and click on one of the 2x2s, it will select all of them regardless of the color. Option 3 is a combination of both the color and the type selector. If I click the red 1x1, it will only select other red 1x1 parts. These three selection tools can be super useful if you're building a larger model and you want to change all the parts of a specific color to another color, for example. Next is by connected. These 2x2s might look like they're connected, but that's not what this means. Connected means that the studs of one part are actually connected to another part. So if I stack two of these on top of each other, I can easily select both of them with the connection selector. Then all the way on the bottom, you'll see the invert selection, which just means that it will select everything you haven't selected. The rest of the toolbar is also pretty self-explanatory, but I'll quickly go through these anyways. With the move tool, you can, well, guess what? Move parts around. The clone tool will let you click on a part to duplicate it, and it will continue to duplicate until you press escape. I will usually just hold the Option key on the Mac or Alt on Windows before selecting a part, which will do the same thing. The only difference is that you'll need to continue holding Option until you're done with that part. To hide a part, simply select it and click Hide. 
To unhide it, you have to go to the step list and manually unhide it by clicking this icon or by clicking show all in the top right. Connect is used when you want something to connect in a very specific way that's not really doable by just dragging. You click one part, hover over it, select which exact connection point you want to connect and then click the connection point on another part. The collision tool will show you when parts are moving into each other. I generally don't use this, but when I'm working on something intricate, I'll turn it on. The snap tool is pretty much always on because it makes connecting everything a bit easier. And then the last option I'll talk about for now is the grid. This is literally one of those things you don't really need, but when you find out about it, you'll use it all the time. What this allows you to do is select how far a part moves when using the WASD keys to make small adjustment to the position. The finer the grid, the smaller the movements. Now let's talk about this huge list of parts. You'll be able to find everything you need in here by simply clicking on one of the categories. If you use a specific category a lot, you can set it as favorite and it will move to the top. You can also use the search bar to quickly find the piece you need. For example, if I want a 1x2 towel, I type that in and it'll show me all the 1x2 towels. You will notice there's a lot of towels with prints on them. If you don't want to see those, you can click this icon and it will clean up very nicely. On the left of that icon, you can pick a color. Just make sure to check this box so you only get parts that actually exist. And then all the way on the right, you can change how big the parts are displayed. Over on the other side of the screen, you can find the color palette, where you can change the color of the parts you're already using. To do that, make a selection and choose the colors you want. You can also pick a color, click this paint roller icon, and you'll be able to sort of paint the color onto the parts. The eyedropper is used for selecting a color that's already in use, but you can also select a color from the content colors, because those are the ones that are actually in use in your project. If there's colors that you use a lot, you might want to set them as favorites, so they're super easy to find later on. The last thing we need to mention is the step list. You don't really need to worry about this too much, unless you plan on making instructions for your project. You can quite literally see this as if you're following instructions for official LEGO sets. You want to think of it as if you're on the building side of things. For example, if you need to put in 27 different parts, it might be difficult to follow where they would all go. I actually make instructions of my builds too, and they're available to YouTube members over on my Discord server. If you're interested in a town hall instructions for example, make sure to check it out. And a big thanks to all my current YouTube members who helped me support in making more and better videos. Now that we've covered all the basics, we can actually start building. At the beginning of the video, I told you I'll be adding some details to the city hall I built in a previous video. I want to add a library, an art gallery, and an office for the mayor. For the sake of this video, I'll just cover the library for now. So to start, I'm using parts in all the same color, and I'll change it later. The library needs a couple of bookshelves, a big table to read at, and we can look into a different floor pattern to separate the areas. So, starting with a 2x6 plate, we can add a 1x4 towel, two corner bricks, and a 1x2 brick. If you plan on making instructions for your builds, be sure to actually use the steps. The best way to figure out how to do this is just to play around with it a little bit. But in essence, you want to do it the same way as official LEGO set instructions do. Don't use too many parts in the same step, go layer by layer, and if something can be seen as a sub-build, make sure to use sub-models for it. But I'll show you that in a bit. Now, with a 1x6 brick, a modified and a regular 1x1 brick, this is the first layer done. As you can see, it's super easy to find the parts you need by using the search bar. To add the books, you can simply add a selection of 1x2 plates and give each one a different color using the color palette on the right. You can easily select everything and hold Option and left click to duplicate it. You can of course also use the clone tool in the toolbar at the top. To finish the top, we'll add another 2x6 and some 2x2 tiles. With this done, we still need to color the actual bookshelves. With the color selection, we can select everything besides the books. I'll make it brown. But as you can see, two exclamation marks popped up in our step list over here. That means that those specific parts aren't available in the color you decided to go with. They're not in Bricklink's database, so it's safe to assume that part just doesn't exist. If you change it to, let's say, medium brown, you'll see that there's no parts available in that color at all. What you can do to not accidentally go for a color that doesn't exist with the part you're using is actually turn on a filter with this option. That way, Studio will only show you the available colors. Let's change the color of the shelves to something that does work. Because the only brown in the filtered list is reddish brown, we'll go with that one. 
But let's say you wanted tiles on top to be a different color than the rest. You can use the type and color selection tool to quickly select all of these and change them to dark bluish gray for example. In this case it's a super small build and it might save you more time by just command or control on windows, clicking them individually to select them. We've only built one bookshelf but I want three of them in the town hall. You could just select everything and duplicate it like we did with the second layer but that might mess up your instructions a little bit. A better way is to make these shelves into a submodel. This is especially useful if all of them are going to be identical. To do that, you want to select everything that needs to be put into the submodel, then right click, submodel, and create. Give it a name and press OK. As you can see, it grouped everything into one clickable object. The steps inside the submodel are still intact, so it won't mess with the instructions later on. You can now go ahead and duplicate them as you would normally. Now that you know the basics of building with Studio, you can go ahead and let your creativity out. But there are still three more things we need to cover. So let me quickly build the table and do some small modifications and we'll be ready to make a nice render of the library. There you go, all done. I want to make some simple instructions for these bookshelves. So let's render a good quality image that we can slap on the front. What you want to do is go to File and then Render Image. A window will pop up that has a bunch of settings you can change. So first of all, on the left, you'll see the preview of the image that's going to be rendered. And below that, you'll find the aspect ratio of your final image. I generally use 1920 by 1080 because that's the standard size for video. After that, you can move your object around in the preview window to fit your needs. You can simply just do this with your mouse, the same way you would do while building. Over on the right, you can select what the quality of your render should be. I usually go with very high, but depending on your computer, it might be better to lower that a little bit. In the background and light tab, you can change the background color to whatever you like, or go with a transparent background. If you go for transparent, you can even decide if you want the natural shadow there or not. I usually don't, and then add the shadow later in Photoshop. The light settings are a little bit tricky. I suggest you just experiment with that a bit yourself and see what you like. It doesn't show up on the preview, so you'll actually have to render the image to find out what everything does. These are the four options for the light direction with the bookshelves. I didn't change any of the other settings, but at least this will give you an idea of what it does. For the camera setup, it will change values when you manually adjust the angle in the preview window. But you can also just change these numbers around if you prefer that. Then all the way at the bottom, you can add some realistic effects like the LEGO logo on the studs, UV degradation and scratches. It really brings your render to life, which is pretty cool. Again, I would just experiment with these numbers to see what you like best. If all the settings are the way you want them, you can click Render. It might take a while, but when the render is done, it's going to look something like this. From there, I'll quickly take it through Photoshop and create a nice looking front page that I can use for the instructions. As long as you thought about putting all the parts in the right steps while building, you can just go ahead and click this icon here. This will bring you to the Instruction Maker. On this screen, you can slightly alter the building steps. I personally never use this though. From here, I go straight into the Page Design tab. On the left, you'll see the different pages. Every step in your build will be shown on a new page, but you can change the layout to group multiple steps together. I'll show you how that works when we get to the chairs we made. On the top, you can go back to the Step Editor, lock a page, change the layout or add special elements. Then on the right is where you change the design of everything. So to start, we'll add a new page at the beginning. Add an image and select the render we made for the front page. I ended up changing this to the standalone shelves with the table and chairs, since we won't have the full town hall included in these instructions. It made more sense to me this way. I do, however, want to add it to the second page to give people an idea of what it could look like. To make it extra clear these instructions don't come with the full town hall, we'll add a little text box. With that done, we can start working on the actual instructions. I'm gonna do this in the same style as I did with the town hall, so we'll need to change some of the general settings first. You can do that by going to global styles. I want the background to be grey, the step numbers to be Arial Regular, I'm removing the fill from the parts list, and the new parts should be highlighted in red. We'll change the submodel preview a little bit too. The callout box we don't really need to worry about right now, since we won't be using any in these instructions. But in the town hall instructions I made, I did change it. This is what it looks like. 
They're basically small submodels within the steps. Okay, now onto the actual page design. If we look at the submodel, you can see it's flipped around. That means that the building steps are also flipped. To change that, click on it, go to the right, click on change step view, and use the arrows to rotate it to how you want. Now the orientation will also change for all the steps after the current one. So if we go forward a couple of pages and do the same thing, you'll see that the steps before don't change. So just make sure to keep that in mind. Now let's also turn around the submodel for this page. And then one more change I want to make is the step number. I want it to be below the part list. To do that, you can just drag it to wherever you want. Talking about the part list, you can also change that a little bit. Take this for example. It's super long because we have six different parts in the same list. You can click one of the edges and just drag it to where you want. For me, two rows of three looks pretty good. It is a little close to the build right now. To fix that, we can just click on it and move it out of the way a little. Okay, I'll quickly finish up the rest of the pages until we get to the chairs. Because these chairs are quite small, you could easily fit the three steps on a single page. What you want to do is select the first page on the left and click Change Layout on the top. This will give you a number of options, but we're only interested in the ones with three steps on them. The page is oriented horizontally, so this makes the most sense. And as you can see, the layout is a bit messed up right now. But if we move some things around, it looks like it came straight from official LEGO instructions. When you finish the layout, you can make a nice PDF of it by clicking Export in the top right. There's not much to it, just make sure all pages and PDF are selected and choose what resolution you want to use. The higher the resolution, the bigger the file size and the longer it takes to complete the export. For something small like this, it won't really make a difference, but for the over 500 pages of the town hall instructions, it actually does. And with that, I've shown you all the basics you need in order to start building for yourself. If you want to start using Studio to make custom modular buildings but don't know how, I'll tell you all about it in this video.